Well, well, well. So Shadir Sanders has a chance to win Black College Football Player of the Year. But wait a minute, I thought they said that his daddy was the reason why he's the quarterback. That he had no talent. Remember that? Let's talk about it. What's good with it, everyone? This is DJ's Raw Uncut Truth, giving you the raw content that you deservedly need. Shadir Sanders. Before I go on, congratulations for winning Swag Newcomer of the Week. Uh, you have been balling out. No offensive line. Keep getting hit. Keep getting hit. Keep getting hit. And finds a way to put points on the board. Uh, they finally just opened up the offense a couple weeks ago. Shout out to T.C. Taylor. Shadir just makes it happen. 1,800 yards, 20 total touchdowns, and only one interception. And actually, uh, Shadir could have had zero interceptions heading into, what, week eight or so? Uh, but you saw the play against ULM when the receiver didn't run the proper route and it was a drag route and the linebacker picked it out. Besides that, he's been efficient. 70 plus completion percentage. Um, he's doing his thing. But if Shadir Sanders wins the Black uh, College Football Player of the Year, if he wins that award, man, all the fake narratives, all the the doubt that was spewed in his way will be silence. They better hope that he doesn't win that award. But I'm going to tell you something. If he wins the Black College Football Player of the Year award, here's what they're going to do. This is the old media playbook. What they're going to do is say, he only won the award because of talent on the roster. But a quarterback's job is enhancing the talent. Look what he's done. He's distributed the football equally. Keith Corbin has almost 600, I think he has 600 yards receiver but each receiver has 200 plus or more yards. So if you're open, he's gonna give you the ball. Last week he was feeding uh, Malachi Wyman, got him going. And all of a sudden Mal Malachi Wyman has six touchdowns. Remember, he's only started playing a few weeks ago. He finally started to learn the playbook. Some days it will be Rucker that he will feed. Some days it will be Newman. And I hope Newman's okay. I think he's injured. I don't know how long he'll be injured for. I don't know if it's for the season. Um, if anyone has an update on that, let me know. So he's showing no favoritism. He's showing leadership. Shadir Sanders huddled up all of his offense in line. He got into them. And that's what quarterbacks have to do. But he wasn't trying to show them up. He was trying to tell them. And you could tell if you could read his lips. All I need is two more seconds. Hold up for two more seconds. Jackson State in their offense they have not been able to run the tempo that they would like because there's always false starts or, or missed alignment penalties. And the fact that this young man is finding a way, putting up numbers, putting up efficient numbers. They got four games left.
and they're getting better on offense every single time. The sky's the limit. But I thought Shadir was a game manager, that he doesn't have all that on. That he was given everything and not a leader. I've heard all of the crap and everyone that's listening has heard it. But each week, he keeps proving people wrong and he's motivated. Motivated. You can, you can see the fire that he plays with. He rises above the hate. He rises above the doubt. He feeds off that. When he scores a touchdown, whether it's a run or a throw, just look at his body language. He's turned up every time he makes a big play, and deservedly so. I'm going to tell you why Shadir Sanders may dislike him. Um, in this conference called the SWAG, the old SWAG, the traditionalists, wanted their players to not show too much bravado, swagger, exude extreme confidence. When he went to the SWAG Media Day, he was being very honest. He said that in, in in one of the interviews, if I had a good defense, if I had a good practice against our top level defense, then that's a good day for offense. Uh, looking at the games in their schedule and the teams they played, he wasn't lying. A la Alabama A&M. When they scored 60 plus points and held Alabama a and Remember, Alabama a and was a top 10 offense. All of a sudden, they're not good because Jackson State beat them. So all of a sudden, Alabama a and doesn't have a good offense. When they, when they put up uh, 31 points against a talented FAMU defense, and all of a sudden, Alabama a and doesn't have a good offense. Hilaire and uh, Zabrion Moore, they're talented receivers. And I hope the NFL gives them a good look. I think they will. So Alabama a and which was top 10 all the way through before playing Jackson State. Oh, they're not they're not a good offense anymore. Okay. So when Jackson State beats another good team who has a winning record, they're gonna say, well, they're not all that. And it's gonna be that with current pendulum. It's a game within a game, my brothers and sisters. And they're not fooling me. They're not fooling me one bit. Remember ULM? Oh, they're a garbage team in the Sun Belt. They're four and three and have a winning record in the Sun Belt. Rich Rodriguez is doing wonders with that offense. And Jackson State, I think they're the only team that, um, let me look, they're the only team that did not allow a touchdown against um, ULM. That's impressive. Of course, I would like Jackson State next year to, to schedule tougher opponents. But this was the official first year of the fall season. And Coach Prime deserves that benefit of the doubt being a first year coach. I mean, you have people saying, oh, they need to schedule uh, 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 Alabama, Ohio State, and and and, and, and uh, North Dakota State, and I get it. But usually, if you use common sense, first-year coaches do not have the strongest opening schedules. 
I'm talking about non-conference. So that's why Delta State, Delta State was scheduled two years out of advance. And if you think you they could give uh, give the money back and do that, that's not how it works. It's a contract. You must honor your contract. See, this, this schedule was made two years ago. But when others are trying to put a narrative and, and this Jackson State, they're, they're playing the, the teams that's on the schedule. That's not their fault. You ask the players right now on Jackson State if they want to play North Dakota, uh, Eastern Washington, they'll be like, hell yeah. I don't think they're scared of anybody. In Jackson State show this week, if they play a passing team, they're really good at zone. Y'all wanted the turnovers, y'all got it. Jackson State had three picks. Almost all three of the picks were turned for touchdown. Almost three of them. And they, and they should have been touchdowns. This is how good that Jackson State defense is. And the D-line didn't even play to their standard. And they played good. That's how elite they are. I'm going to enjoy this run. I don't know about y'all, but I am. Because this type of stuff in the swag and in the HBCUs, this is next level territory. And yeah, we have had great teams before. Uh, the Grambling team with Devontae Kincaid and others. But the media presence, as well as the notoriety, is unprecedented. And man, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to really enjoy this process. This is DJ's Raw and Cut Truth. Peace and blessings. Peace and love to everybody. Stay positive and have a good day.